what used to be known as the Knitting Pastor Vlogcast. Uh, I am your host, Heather, and it has been a while since I have recorded anything. So apologies right now for how rough this is going to be, but I wanted to record something because I just haven't in a long time. So I'm going to do that. For those of you who are watching for the first time, welcome. I'm glad that you are here. I am still figuring out how this is going to look right now, so bear with me in that. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for coming back. I know it has been a while, and to just state the obvious right off the bat, you can tell I've moved. This is not my normal setup or my previously normal setup. So yeah, we're in a new place. I'll get to that shortly. So this is a knitting, primarily a knitting vlog, but the vlog part has kind of gone out the window in the last few episodes that I've made. Um, but this is primarily about knitting. It's also a little bit about my life. It was previously about my ministry as a United Methodist pastor, but I am currently no longer serving my churches. I am on a disability leave because Back in July, I contracted COVID and I am a long hauler, which means that I suffer with uh, long-term, rather debilitating effects from having COVID. Uh, for me, primarily, it is shortness of breath as well as extreme fatigue. So I am not able to serve in my church capacity at the moment, which has not been easy. Since this is primarily about knitting though, I'm going to start by talking about my knitting and then at the end I will talk about what's been going on. For those of you who are interested in that, if you only want to hear knitting then you can just listen to the knitting part and then turn it off. That's completely fine. So in talking about knitting, I can't remember what I was working on the last time I recorded anything. So I grabbed a couple of things that I have finished, as well as things that I'm currently working on, and I thought that I would talk about those. If I've missed something that you remember and I you think I finished, or you're wondering what happened with that, just leave a comment down below, and I'll either reply to your comment or I'll try to remember that in the next video. My hope is now that I've moved and things are kind of falling into something somewhat normal, of a routine, I will be able to record things more. I can't make any promises right now, but that's my hope and my intention. So if there's something you're wondering about, please leave it in the comments below, I'll let you know. Also in the comments below, there will be links to patterns, uh, yarns, that sort of thing. Stuff that I talk about should be included in the down below as like show notes, so to speak. So that information should all be there. You can also find me on Ravelry um, as well as on Instagram. I'm Heathered Knits in both places. Uh, so I think that may end up being what the name of this podcast becomes, at least until I'm back into that pastoral role. We'll see. So one of the obvious things, for those of you who've watched for a while, that I am wearing is a finished object. Um, some of you may remember this sweater. This is my Love Note sweater by Tin Can Knits. I was working on this last year before the pandemic started. And it was going along really, really well. It was, I was loving it, loving the knit, loving how it was looking, loving how it was turning out, just really loving it. And then I got done with one sleeve and I realized I didn't have enough mohair left. And so began a quest to get more of the mohair and it was a very particular color dyed by dream and fiber dream and fiber and it was this purpley blue color i reached back out to my local yarn shop which is where i got the yarn and i was having a hard time getting an like another skein of it from that I, kept, I looked in all sorts of other places trying to find this colorway and I couldn't find it anywhere. Like I could not find this colorway anywhere. About, I guess it was a couple of months ago in January, I started looking one more time because it was really bothering me. The sweater had one sleeve left. That was it. 
and I had knit it longer and the other sleeve longer which is why I ran out of mohair if I had because I don't really like cropped things if I'd knit it according to like the pattern specifications I would have been fine but because I lengthened things I was running out of mohair I had plenty of the fingering weight yarn that wasn't a problem the mohair was a problem so I decided to look for this one last time if I couldn't find it I felt like I was gonna have to rip this out and do something else. Happened to find someone on Ravelry who had like half of a skein listed in their D stash, like, or in their stash, right? But it said not for sale. And I thought, well, I'm gonna reach out to this person just in case because they have like half a skein of mohair and who wants half a skein of more hair? So I reached out to them and said, hey, I don't know if you'd be interested in selling this, but I'm, you know, I needed to finish a project. And they came back and said, yes, we will send this to you. You don't have to pay for it. We will send it to you by all means. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm finally going to finish this sweater. She sent it to me. I got it. I finished it. It's done and I love it. And it's so warm and it's so, oh, it's so soft and just amazing. So I'm not going to stand up because of the way the camera is set up. But um, if you go to my Ravelry page, there are pictures there. If I try, I, I'll try to remember, maybe I'll insert a picture of like me wearing it here. But yeah, I, I love it. It was such a fun knit. It knit up so fast. Oh, highly, highly recommend it. The yarn that I use, as I mentioned, the mohair is from Dream and Fiber. Um, I'm forgetting the name of the colorway right now. I'll put it down below. The other yarn is from a Michigan dyer that works with my local yarn shop. Um, she puts a lot of things into the local yarn shop and it's called AJHC Wools. And this colorway is blueberry crumb cake uh, that I am pairing it with. I am so pleased with it. I was so happy to finish this sweater and it is a very windy, very chilly day today here in mid-Michigan and so I put it on and I was gonna record and I thought, ah, it's a perfect sweater to wear for this. So here it is. I'm so happy to be done with it. I also finished two pairs of socks and I also have an almost finished pair of socks. So after a lot of debate, I decided to go ahead and get Helen Stewart's Handmade Sock Society season four? Three? I can't remember if it's season three or four. Anyway, the first two sock patterns for that have been released and I did knit both of them. Um, I have one of each on a sock blocker um, because I have two pairs of socks and only one pair of sock blockers and it just, so there's just one. So the first one that was released in February are called the Curling Mist Socks. And these are those. The other one is here. Um, so here is the curling mist sock. I really, really enjoyed this pattern a lot. I really like how it turned out. The yarn is some yarn that I actually dyed myself. I was trying to fit a color into um, my spring cleaning shawl that I knit like back this fall. And I was trying to dye a color to fit with that. And this, I dyed this color which didn't really fit with the pattern that I was using, but I still really liked it. And I thought it was perfect for these socks. And I really very much like how this turned out. The other pair of socks, um, these are called the Picnic Blanket Socks. And I have, they're not my favorite. Um, so this is, this is the finished, one of the finished socks. Obviously there's two finished socks, but this is one of them. Um, not my favorite pattern to knit. Uh, the the cut or the leg is this style where it kind of creates like this puckering effect and then the rest of it, I mean, it's basically a stockinette sock with this puckering effect. And so I'm, they were not my favorite socks. Uh, I love Helen Stewart's patterns. Uh, usually I have no problem with them, 
it's fine, but this is not particularly my style. I'm not real ruffly. This is kind of ruffly looking to me. So not my favorite. And I'm kind of disappointed because I love the yarn. I love the very subtle contrast happening with the heel and the toe. So it makes me sad that I didn't love the pattern because I love the yarn combination. The yarn that I used is from Hue Loco um, and this colorway is Luna Lovegood. It was one of the colorways of her 2019 advent calendar, which I had and I loved this colorway and so I got a full skein of it. And then the contrasting toe and heel are from Birch Howell Fibers. Um, I used her yarns to knit um, Helen Stewart's latest MCAL, the name of which is escaping me at the moment, um, but that's on my Ravelry page. And I think this colorway was called Ball Gown, I think, I don't recall, um, but it's kind of like a bluey gray green and it just went really, it was a really nice subtle contrast with these. So I'm really disappointed that I didn't love the pattern because I loved the yarn. That being said, I will still wear them. They're not, it's not like they're not gonna get worn or anything like that. It's just wasn't my favorite thing to put together and to knit. The other pair of socks that I have almost done um, are gonna look familiar because I had um, purchased the Cozy Knitters 24 stripe advent skein and when you purchase that, you actually get 48 stripes in two separate balls. So each ball is 48 stripes, or each little skein, because then I won't know, is 48 stripes. And I did contrasting heels, cuffs, and toes because it's self-striping, and I, I wanted to keep the pattern. I didn't want to interrupt that with a heel. So I, um, I only used half of the yarn basically for mine because I don't have very large feet and so I didn't need that much yarn. So what I did was I decided to knit another pair with what was left and Abby, I'm gonna give these to Abby, but I reversed the striping order and so for Lent, because it's been Lent, Advent Lent, so it's been Lent and so for Lent I've been kind of doing what I did for Advent it's just not lasting as long because Lent's longer than 24 days um, and just knitting like a stripe a day. But I have finished the first sock and I just have to do the toe on the second sock. So like I said, these are going to be for Abby and I just reversed the direction. So mine, you know, start with this color and go this way from the cuff down. We just flipped them and did it, did it this way. So these I'll probably finish tomorrow is my guess and then these will be these will be done and like I said these will be for Abby but hey I got two pairs of socks out of that skein of yarn I'm happy with that this works for me Abby's happy with it because she gets a pair of socks so it was it was a good it was a good investment I've really enjoyed doing that at Advent and I've really enjoyed it doing it again just that one stripe in the morning is usually when I knit it and it just it's like the perfect way to start my day. I've really enjoyed that a lot. So the other project that I'm working on that I just realized I am in the middle of a row is also using up Advent yarn. Um, I purchased the Legacy Fiber Arts Advent Calendar for 2020 and I knit the Land of Sweets cowl from Helen Stewart with my first bunch of that in the order that things opened. But I decided that to use up the rest, because I still had like 15, 16 grams of each little mini skein left. So that was quite a bit. And I wanted to do something more with it than just like a square in my cozy memories blanket. And then you know, into my granny stripe blanket. I wanted to do more with it because I really liked the colors. I really liked the yarn. So what I did with Abby's assistance, because she's my color person, is we reorganized it into a fade and I am knitting the adventuresome 
wrap by Amba O'Brien. She also does a bunch of advent knitting patterns, so I would really recommend checking her out for scrappy projects and things like that. And so I have started that with what's left, and this is where I am so far. Like I said, I'm in the middle of the row. So I've, I think I'm on the eighth color from the advent. So yeah, so we're, I'm making it basically be a fade. Uh, so that it just kind of blends into the colors and then you do like half and then you do the other half so it's an interesting construction it's all garter stitch so it's really mindless it's really what my brain wants right now um, is just mindless simple knitting nothing to it that's it so this is this is my current project that I am working on and then when the next pattern from the Handmade Sock Society comes out, I'll knit that as well. I don't know yet what that will be. That will be released, I think. The beginning, I don't know if it's going to be this Thursday or next Thursday. I think it's next Thursday, this, the 8th. Sounds about right. Of April. Oh, I should say, today is March 28th that I'm recording this. So that is... That is it with the knitting. Um, like I said, uh, notes for the projects and whatnot will be down below. If you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comments and I will reply to those. If you are only interested in the knitting, thank you so much for watching. Uh, for those of you who want a little bit more of an update with what's been going on with me, stick around and uh, we will talk about that. Okay, so a little bit of update with what is going on with me. Uh, the most obvious thing that you probably have noticed is that my voice has improved drastically. Um, I did take another trip to Cleveland Clinic to work on that, um, and then I've been working with a speech therapist. Uh, all of those things have helped improve my voice quality quite a bit. It's a lot easier for me to speak, but I still run out of breath when I speak, so that's still a problem. I still run out of breath really doing most anything. The fatigue is still there, still very overwhelming, very crippling, very frustrating. Uh, we have moved. Uh, we've moved into an apartment um, that I'm hoping will just be temporary. I wanted to look into purchasing a home. However, I didn't have time from when I needed to be out of the parsonage. There just wasn't enough time to go through the mortgage process and then find a place. And it's a crappy time of year right now in Michigan. And so nobody's moving and it just, there wasn't a lot of options. And so we decided that we would do a six month lease with an apartment and stay here temporarily until we can find something more permanent or maybe I get better. I'm hoping for get better and then I get reappointed, but I also need to be like reasonable and know that it's been nine months and things haven't gotten better yet. So unless something drastic happens, I don't know that they will get better in the next six months. That's very frustrating, but I'm trying to make the best of it. We are making the best out of the situation of being in the apartment. Um, we're in town now, so we're close to things. Um, the kids' school is like five minutes away as opposed to 20 minutes away. So that's all very positive. There are some downsides to it. Uh, it's on the second floor. Um, that makes things challenging for me. But in the grand scheme of things, it's okay. Um, we've been here just over a week now. Uh, everything is unpacked. Now that all of that's done, I'm hoping that I can rest a little bit because I haven't really been able to truly rest and allow my body time to recover through all of this. So I'm hoping for that. It was really difficult to leave the churches. My one church in particular was very supportive. Um, and to leave and not really get a good chance to say goodbye. And I can't go back. Um, so that's been really hard too. But again, we're making the best of the situation. This coming week is Holy Week, and that is very difficult for me because I'm not leading a church. I haven't been back to a church because, well, for one thing, I still haven't been vaccinated for COVID, and 
Um, the new variant has been found in Michigan and our case numbers are starting to kind of go back up again. So there's that, uh, but I'm not ready emotionally or mentally to go back into a church in the capacity of just worshiping and not leading. That's going to be difficult for me because that was my calling. And I think that's gonna take some time. I do watch an online worship service from a church, from a well-known, well-respected pastor in the Methodist church. So I watch that for my personal worship, but I haven't been back into a church. I'm not sure when I will feel ready to do that yet. And I'm not going to rush that either. I need to feel okay and comfortable and ready to do that before I do it. So that's where I am. I do go back and see my doctor next week. Um, I don't know what might come of that, but we'll be back. We'll see what he has to say. There's just not a lot that can be done for the chronic fatigue or for, the, for this. So that gets frustrating because you just feel like you're sitting and waiting for it to get better, but you don't know when it's going to get better. I am taking a couple of classes still through seminary. Um, I was told that I could still do that and I want to be able to continue to do that because it will keep me from losing my mind because I don't know what I'm going to do having extra time and not having the energy to do stuff. I mean, that's the thing, right? Is I have the time now, but I don't have the energy to do a lot of things. So we'll see how things go. But being able to take classes has been good because it still keeps me connected with, with the ministry and it still gives my brain something to do and to engage in. And so that has been good. And I want to, I hope to be able to continue that. As far as the kids go, they are, okay, so things are interesting. Next week is their spring break. It's also my spring break as well. Um, Abby has gone out west with a friend um, on a little road trip. They're happy to let her go and do something fun. Uh, Phil is splitting the week between me and his dad and we don't really have anything planned in particular. But after spring break, things get interesting. So Phil has been going back in person two days a week since the beginning of March. The district started back up some in-person stuff at the beginning of March. So he's been going on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Our governor issued some statement a couple of weeks ago, something to the effect that school districts needed to offer at least 20 hours of in-person learning time to get like this extra funding. Well, the way it was set up for our district, two days a week wasn't enough. So they had to adjust that for the elementary kids. And I think maybe middle school as well. I'm not sure. So starting April 5th, when they go back from spring break, Phil will be going four days a week. So Monday through Thursday, but from like 10.15 to 3.15? I don't know. We decided to send Abby back the, for her last trimester and she will be going on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 to 3 basically, roughly. So that's all becoming very strange. Like everything changes. Just when you start to get used to one thing, it changes and you're figuring it all out all over again. So things will be really interesting, but there will be a couple days a week where I won't have kids here at all. Um, it's been really good for Phil for him to go back in person. Um, he has needed that and I think Abby is ready for it as well. The reason that we didn't send Abby back at the same time that I sent back Philip is because when we had to make that decision it was back in like December when we were having like 10,000 new cases a day here in Michigan and high school. It's a big district they're not in self-contained classrooms. They're passing each other in the hallway. And so we decided that for Abby, no, she wasn't going to do that. She's just gonna, we're just gonna hold off. So we've held off, but I think we're ready to send her back. So she will go two days a week, at least until infection rates 
drop down I can't remember what the threshold is but once they drop down low enough then everybody will be back in person five days a week so that is where we are at with kids and and school it's been a journey to say the least so okay I think I've talked enough for now and I am getting tired so I am gonna end it here I I may try to do some blogging uh, and see how that goes. I don't know that it's gonna work out all that well, um, but I'm gonna give it a try. We'll see how it goes. I'm hoping to be able to put things up a little bit more frequently. Maybe I can find my microphone. I don't know where it's at. I don't know that I'll be able to find it. So I think that's how we will proceed for now. Thank you very much for watching. Again, I apologize, it's been a long time. Um, if you, you know, enjoyed this, you know, you can give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe so you know when you hear from, so you'll know when I post a video again. If you didn't enjoy it, feel free to move on. Find something that suits you and your taste a little bit more. There's lots of good content out there, so I would encourage you to keep looking for that. So thank you so much. I hope you are all doing well in this crazy time that we are living in, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.